Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is going to be a rig walkthrough, specifically with the Ram truck, and basically go over a lot of the components and a lot of the modifications that I've done to the truck to get it to where it is now, to help you guys and girls out there with your build, and to help answer all the questions that have been popping up in the comment section recently. So, let's get started. Alright, so getting started on the outside of the truck, I think the biggest thing that people really notice is not just the sheer size of the truck. Keep in mind, I'm standing on about three inches of ice right now, and I'm five foot seven. The truck is big now, so let's talk about rims and tire setup because this is what really gets people's attention, and they're always asking the combination of what I've got running here. So these are 40 inch BF Goodrich crawler tires. They're super knobby. They're 13 and a half inches wide and I'm running a 17 inch rim. The reason I went with this is 40 inch gives me enough clearance for what I do specifically going over logs and big rocks on the trail. And the 13 and a half wide, which means to get a nice wide footprint, nice tall sidewall paired with the 17 inch rim the 17 inch rim is about the smallest I can go with the ram because of the size of the brakes. So 17 and a nice tall sidewall gives me all that room. So when I air down, that tire really widens out and I get a really, really nice footprint in soft sand, mud, and even soft snow. The rims are fuel um, battle axe rims, I wanna say. They're, like I said, 17 inches and they're zero offset. So they're actually the same offset as the factory rims. They're not a negative. I'm actually running a two inch wheel spacer front and rear on the truck to give it that little extra poke out the side. All right, everybody. So moving over to this camera angle, you guys can clearly see how much is outside of the truck. This gives a much wider footprint overall with the whole truck. It's really good because it actually stabilizes the truck a lot. So when you get on a really steep angle, it's just having that extra width so we're out probably about four inches maybe five so we'll just say 10 inches total extra width of the entire truck it's really really wide very very stable for such a big truck the problem is going through narrow trails so sometimes i come across bridges and the truck is actually a little bit too wide or it'll be running on the beams that hold the bridge it'll actually be running across the beams instead of on the actual planks which is not a problem, just gotta be very, very careful driving across, but it is quite a bit wider. Just wanted to show this angle for you guys because I know a lot of people have been asking the offset. It is zero offset. They're just 13 and a half inch wide tires, which gives it that extra poke, plus the two inch wheel spacers. So the second thing I wanna talk about is the lift kit on this truck. It is a combination of different things. So first off, it is a six inch suspension lift from Rough Country. Front and rear is total six inch suspension. And then I went ahead and put in a four inch body lift kit on top of that. And that basically gives us 10 inches of lift plus the extra lift from the height of the tires. So we're probably, I wanna say, I think it's about 12 inches, 12 and a half inches total lift uh, with the tires. I haven't actually measured the inside, but just for suspension wise, it is 10 inch suspension plus the height of the tires. So that should give you guys uh, pretty good information. Now I did get these tires on there by doing a little bit of trimming on the rear fender as well in the front. Now when I turn, there is no rubbing. However, at hard compression of the shocks, if I'm really flexing out, turning sometimes rubs. So I either have to go crank the wheel hard to oversteer and get past that rub spot or understeer to stay away from that rub spot. So there's one spot where it does rub, not terrible though. Just learning the truck and knowing how to drive it totally takes that problem away. So let's talk about the front bumper and the system that we've got going on here because this is where things get a little interesting. All right, so coming over to the front of the truck, we've got a number of things going on here. Um, some of you may recognize this portion of the bumper. This was put on the truck probably about a year ago. Um, this is from Weston, I believe I purchased this from. It's basically a push bar full bumper uh minus the bottom half it's been cut off so what i did is i purchased this nfab pre-runner style bumper 
And I got it because I wanted massive clearance in the front end for approaching hills and to accommodate the 40 inch tires. When I put this on, it uh, it just didn't look right. It, it looked pretty bare and empty, and I didn't want to go changing the whole front grille system because that really doesn't add anything to the truck performance-wise. It's only aesthetics, and I want to add performance pieces and parts upgrades that I can actually use to better my situation. So what I did is I basically looked at the push bar bumper. It was sitting up against my other truck, and I was staring at it thinking, geez, I bet I could cut that and make some custom mounts and weld and bolt it back onto the truck incorporating it with the nfab style bumper and that's exactly what i did so knowing that this would already fit on the truck because it's made for the truck i took some measurements i popped it on top and i made some marks with some marker took out the angle grinder me and my wife we zipped it off and i got her out here to help me kind of hold it and welded up some tabs using the old bracket steel that actually held this on. So we're bolted onto the tow hooks underneath of the truck. I reused those exact brackets. I just cut them off, welded them onto the side. So this whole top piece is bolted to the bottom bumper so they can be separated if and when I need them to be. All right, so coming in for a close look here, I know this is gonna be really hard to kind of differentiate, but this is the NFAB bumper. This is the Weston bumper. Right here, this bracket, I actually welded on. That is from the Weston push bar bumper and welded that on upside down, which gave me a bolting point on the opposite side. All right, so coming in here, looking at the back side, this is kind of tricky to show, but you'll see the bolt head right there. That passes through and the nut is on the other side welded to the bracket. So the only piece that I need to remove is this bolt on this side and one on the driver's side and the two bumpers can be split apart. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more information as to what bumper I'm running. I'm actually running two bumpers. Um, I've been getting asked a lot of questions about it because people cannot find it online. And that's the reason why you can't find it because it is what I like to call my Frankenstein bumper. Two of them put together. Hopefully that gives you guys some ideas and then maybe reusing some of the old parts you guys have for your Jeeps and trucks. You can incorporate them and it worked out really well for me. So. Let's talk about lighting on the truck because there is a lot of lighting. I drive in different conditions and fog, rain, snow, nighttime, pitch black, you name it. Uh, light is the first preventative measure to not ending up in the ditch. <laughs> so what I've got going on here is a number of products. They're all from Oxbeam. So every light on my truck is an Oxbeam product. Starting off on the lower bumper here, I've got, I believe these are the seven inch and these are the nine inch. But these are rounds, these are incredibly bright. I think they shine up to like two kilometers. It is ridiculous. Turning these two on, driving just these two on alone, I have them tipped a little down and they will shine a light up the entire road for forever, forever. They're incredibly bright. Obviously not using them on road with traffic because it will blind the oncoming traffic way far away. So be very cautious when you're using these. Uh, save them for off-road use only. So those are, like I said, I believe these are the seven inch. These I believe are the nine inch. They are a white light as well, just like these, except I put the amber lens on these and I have these tipped up a little bit more. These are incredible. I'll have to do a video showing the difference between them I'm not going to get into that because this is a truck walkthrough, not a light walkthrough. But these fog lamps is what I'm calling them now because they've got the amber. I basically use them as fog lamps. Uh, they light up the entire road, the same thing, about a kilometer, two kilometers. But with this lens and the amber, it throws the light. So it lights everything up. The treetops will be lit up. The grounds lit up. The sides of the road are lit up. These are incredibly bright as well. So when I run all four of them, I do not have any problem seeing anything. And like I said, the truck is very high, so that's the reason why I tipped these down a little bit. And I've kind of left these level. They are tipped up a tiny, tiny bit, just for different light spots. Whatever I need lit up, I go with these for the spots for really long distances. Moving on to the other lights of the truck, we'll talk about that and why I position them where they are and what purpose they serve basically for different lighting. Because I know a lot of people say, geez, you got a lot of lights on your truck, what's the point? There's a point for every light and you don't have to use them all at the same time.
So coming over to this side, looking up at the roof rack, there is an exception. I know I said they're all ox beam lights. These ones aren't, but I didn't add these. They were already on the roof rack. So the roof rack is from Hook Road. It is a roof rack made of steel. It is very, very heavy. It is made for the Ram trucks. They also have them for Ford and Toyota. But this rack actually comes with the lights pre-installed. So these little cube lights up here, I believe they're like two, two and a half inch cubes. There's four on the front and then there are also two strips. I think they're about six inches long on either side of the rack giving side lighting. So talking about the cubes up top, there are two forward facing and they're facing downwards. So they really help light up the front down along the ground to really fill in those shadows again. The two on the outside, so the one on either corner, are tilted down a little farther, but they're also tilted out to light up all of this on the side of the trail. That helps fill in the ditches and trees and branches that may be fallen, give me a better perspective as to where I can go, how far I can push the truck either side of the road. The side lights on the rack throw light way off to the side. Really, really awesome, especially at camp. If you need side lighting, you're getting out, get out, flick on the side lights. You can see the whole bottom of the truck where you're stepping. This makes things so much easier. All right, so coming over to the other side, give you guys a better look up top at those strip lights there. They're set inside of the roof rack, so they're not protruding out, which is really important because when you're driving through, you don't want branches and stuff smacking in your lights, twisting them or breaking them. So those are actually flush mount in the roof rack, which is really nice. On the back side, I did add two pods from Oxbeam. These are set a little bit lower. I did that on purpose because again, I don't want them getting smacked with branches as I'm plowing through the trees. They're set on a downward angle going off to the side. I couldn't go straight because it would cast a shadow from the roof cap, but basically they're backup lights and perimeter lighting so I can see better when I have to back up. I do have a backup camera, which is removable as well. So I just mount the screen on the dash and then I can see where I'm driving with an IR camera. So it does illuminate in the camera. So I didn't really need a whole lot of backlighting. But these two pods up here, one on either side, fill in the whole ground and give me a better idea where I'm at when I'm reversing. And so while we're talking about plowing through trees and pushing branches aside and whatnot, we got a set of limb risers. So these I actually made myself. Could order them online for different trucks, different vehicles, but I just decided to build mine from scratch. So basically this is a braided aircraft cable wrapped in nylon. And what I've done is I welded on tabs onto the push bar. I got these adjusters that you could just put a screwdriver in and twist and tighten. So these are removable. Right now they're set a little loose because I'm actually going to be taking them off. I'm not traveling through the bush and I just, they whistle. They whistle when you're driving down the road. So I'm going to be taking those off shortly. But basically all I did is got all the components I needed from a local hardware store, welded on a tab here, went up to the roof, put a bolt in through there and gave me a really nice set of limb risers. What these do is they basically push all the branches up and over the truck. So when I'm driving through, if I did not have this, all those branches would smack right into the light. They would smash into the windshield. They would get caught underneath of the roof rack. Just a mess, cracking the window, breaking things. So these limb risers actually part the branches. They ride up on the line and they basically unfold and open and the truck just pushes through nice and easily. So these are definitely recommended. I'm going to be adding limb risers to my GMC truck, to my bus, and to my van. This was definitely a good upgrade and I highly recommend doing it if you're going to be traveling through forest and bush and especially after storms, branches are all down. These really do help out a lot. Coming around the rear of the truck, you guys will notice that uh, the camper is configured and set up because I'm currently out camping. Uh, so I'll give you guys a quick look inside of here as well as the outside. So what I'm running for a winch is I've got a 15,000 pound winch on the rear tail hitch on the on the receiver and basically it's a quick remove receiver i've done this on purpose specifically because i don't want to purchase five winches i have a lot of off-road vehicles and i just figured by one good winch putting it on a receiver mount i can move it from the vehicles also i can move it to the front of the vehicle so you'll notice there's no winch on the front of the truck i have a removable plate that basically bolts in it's permanent now but it bolts in and you can weld it bolt it whatever you got to do for towing your vehicle behind an rv 
It's one of those style hitches. So that's on the front of this truck as well. So I can pull the winch off, go around the front, load it in, hook up my cables and winch forward or winch backward. I like leaving it in the back right now because I actually use it as a step for getting in and out. Makes a nice little coffee table, nice little stand for doing stuff when the tailgate's up. Uh, but that is the winch system right here. It is a TYT uh, winch. I basically found it on Amazon. Super reliable, it works really well. Um, can't say enough about it. I got a remote for a wired system and wireless. So right now I've got the wireless remote in the truck. I think I got the wired remote in the GMC and another wireless remote in the van. So this thing just comes off whenever I switch vehicles, pop it on there. I do have a locking pin so no one can come over and steal it. So I do have to unlock that, pull it off, remove it, all that fun stuff. Um, that's basically about it for the rear of the truck. It's still running stock bumper. I'm going to be swapping that out and eventually I'd like to get one of those rear tire carriers because where I'm running 40 inch tires, I don't have a spare with me, which is a huge no-no. It doesn't fit underneath and I don't want to put it up top because it's too heavy to get off. So what I'd like to do is put a big old 40 inch tire right here on the back. I just have to get an aftermarket bumper with one of those swing outs and then we'll have a spare tire on there. So that's a future upgrade coming hopefully soon. So give me guys a real quick side profile here. One thing I will mention is the exhaust is still dropped four inches with the body lift. The exhaust has not been lifted yet. So I do need to get underneath there, cut that, weld it and lift it a little bit higher. But just to give you guys a look here, like I said, running 40 inch tires, that should give you enough idea with the lift that I have, how much clearance there is. I have never rubbed in the back, surprisingly. And this thing gets flexed out pretty good. I've never had it touch either side of the front or the rear. And that's a big piece of rubber in there. So if you guys have a Ram 1500 and you guys are thinking about lifting it, this is what it'll look like with a 10 inch lift. And this is a 2012 Ram 1500, 5.7 liter V8, four x four, obviously. Um, so that'll give you an idea of where you're gonna be sitting if you do that kind of a lift style. There's no trimming in the rear, only trimming in the front. So coming up here to the front, talking about trim, it's all underneath of this fender flare. Basically this is a factory fender flare. I peeled this off and I did a lot of cutting and manipulating of the metal back in this area. So it's all hidden pretty much underneath this fender flare. Um, it, it's really tricky getting in there. So you gotta take the whole wheel off, get in there with a hammer, kind of bang out whatever you need banged out, cut, weld. All that stuff, I'm not going to get into that in this video, but um, this fender flare covers it up nice and neatly, giving me enough clearance. Sometimes it catches on this plastic. This is where it rubs, I should mention that. It rubs on the fender flare, it doesn't rub on the actual cab or the body or any of the control arms or any components like that. It's only on this little piece of plastic, so it's not a major problem, it's just a little bit of an annoyance. All right, so talking about the cap that I have on the truck, this is not designed for this truck. It is a Range Rider cap. It um, basically was on Marketplace. I found it years ago and I bought it because it fit. And I just haven't upgraded, but I would like to upgrade to an actual cap that is specifically made for my truck that hangs over this lip and hangs over the back of the tailgate the way it should. It works totally fine the way it is now, which is why I haven't upgraded it. But it would be nice to have something that actually covers because every now and then rain does seep in underneath. It is sealed. I've completely sealed it and I actually have a whole build process of this truck. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link down in the description. The whole camper build, all that is in there. So it is sealed, but going off road, it's constantly shifting and moving. And there are quite a bit of camping trips on this cap. I will say that. So driving down the highway was really pouring with rain. Some water seeps in, but the way I made the camper is it seeps in and goes down the original truck bed, which is a spray-in bed liner, and then exits the holes underneath. So no water comes inside of the actual living area. And the wood doesn't mold because it's running down the actual truck bed metal and out the drainage holes, just the way I designed it. We'll get more into that once we go inside. But uh, again, you guys can see, it is a big truck. Uh, some people think that the, the truck is on 35s with the six inch lift. Just to give you guys comparison here, it's definitely not, it's a lot bigger. So like I said, 10 inch lift, 40 inch tires. Uh, coming over to the side of the cap, what I did for running my diesel heater is I put a plastic deck plate in here for marine purposes. 
And then I have a SAE 12 volt connector here on the outside. I put my diesel heater on the tire. I don't have the rack here with me, but there's a little rack that goes on. Put the diesel heater on there and I run the hose in through here. There's a four inch hole. I run a three inch pipe with a four inch sleeve. So basically it's a double pipe, which gives me more insulation value instead of having the actual single wall pipe or the single wall vent tube being out in the elements. So that four inch screws in to that portal. And then inside of the four inch is the three inch, which goes inside of the truck, which gives me a one inch gap around the four inch to the three inch building its own insulation. So whatever hot air is coming out of the diesel heater is totally making it inside of the truck, not affected by the cold weather outside. All right, so taking a look up on the top of the roof of the cap, you guys can probably barely make it out, but there is a full size hard solar panel. This is a 200 watt solar panel. It, uh, it's seen better days. I was out in a hurricane camping and I had my truck parked at the trailhead and hiked in, did a hammock camp. This solar panel got beat up a little bit. I also lost the back window because a rock went through it. Uh, yeah, that was a fun time. So the solar panel is 200 watts. It does work. Uh, I'm gonna be replacing it with a new one eventually, but there's a gland underneath of the solar panel. So it's not affected by the wind or the water or snow or anything. And basically that's a portal for the MC4 connectors to go through the top. I've got them snaked in all the way towards the head end and I went with a standard MC4 connector that way whatever battery units I have with me they all have MC4 connectors to charge so I put my batteries back here lock it up plug them in to charge go for a hike go for a bike ride do whatever I got to do when I come back to camp the batteries are usually charged so 200 watt solar up on the roof you guys can also see the stove pipe here Stove pipe coming through the top. I use a silicone baking sheet as a water guard. I'm not going to get into too much of the install on this. I'll navigate you towards the video link down in the description on the full install of the stove. So if you're interested in that, take a look at that video. So basically the truck camper style that I had in mind was more of a multi-use camper. I wanted to be able to use the truck bed as much as I could as a truck bed for different style of camping. Maybe I'm not sleeping in the truck and I still need to use the truck to transport materials, camping gear, all that stuff. So I went with basically an open style bed. So that whole side is a top shelf. This whole side's a shelf plus a battery shelf, wood stove. And then once the mattress comes out, it's totally a truck bed. I mean, it could fit three, four fat bikes in there, uh, different camping gear, groceries if i need to go to the, the grocery store in a big snowstorm which we we've done many times it's still a truck it's just it has a camper in the back so that's the way i designed this the wood stove is positioned towards the outside on purpose because when i'm out here and i'm camping and i want to use the wood stove for cooking i don't have to crawl inside of the truck so it's nice having it right here i can reach in load a piece of wood in close it do all that stuff you guys can see there is some firewood on the outside here around the stove from last night camping here and uh, all in all it works really well i do have a full playlist like i already mentioned on this so if you're interested more in depth on the camper itself check out that video but i'll give you guys a really quick sneak peek in here just so you guys can see i know a lot of viewers already know but we'll just take a look inside for the new viewers all right so i know we're a little limited for visual uh, angles of the camera here but uh, this should give you a pretty good idea of what I've got going on here so the mattress I've got pushed off to this side I've got a fair bit of room over here to kick my shoes off store some extra pieces of gear sitting up I've got all kinds of headroom I've got the cables for the solar panel running here I've got the power cable which goes through the portal to the diesel heater right here so when I plug in on the outside I just got to reach over, plug in one of my battery units, fire it up, and we got heat. Got a nice shelf up here for all cooking stuff. Another shelf over here for random gear. Battery storage units in here, so all the lighting inside powered off of all these battery units. It's pretty comfortable, I got to say. I mean, I've spent many, many nights in here by myself and with my wife. And it is definitely a living truck. We did a two-week trip in Newfoundland, Labrador in the back of this and it was incredible uh, once you get in here and kind of learn how things work it's totally doable to people uh, this is a tri-fold mattress so it folds up 
three times. And what I like to do is fold it twice and then have the back piece sit up. So two pieces on the bottom, one on the back, which gives me a chair. And then I can sit and recline all the way back and have the floor totally open, which is great on camping trips when I have my backpack and it's pouring with rain. I'll bring everything back here, dump my backpack, load it, put all my gear in there, and then jump out, lock the truck, and then start hiking a trail. So it's still used as a truck, not just a camper. All right, so I hope this quick uh, kind of informational walkthrough video of where the truck has been, where it is, and where it's going to go was a little helpful to you guys out there. Uh, I will say everything else interior is stock other than a couple things on the dash, like the aux beam switch panels inside of there, backup camera, a couple things like that. Um, underneath the hood, everything's basically stock as well, um, other than a cold air intake. So I did install a K&N cold air intake on the truck just to help with uh, driving 4x4 because underneath these hoods, these 5.7 liter engines can get quite hot when you're running go stop, go stop, go stop on trails, especially with, uh, with summer heat and all that stuff. So having a cold air intake and a really good fan really helps keep the engine nice and cool, as well as opening up the whole front of the bumper. So when you're driving, there's a lot more airflow that gets in here now. And uh, I actually noticed my temperature gauge being a tiny, a tiny, tiny bit lower on the temperature running it this way with the cold air intake. I've never had any issues with the needle going up or getting hot. So that is basically it. Uh, if you guys are interested in anything else, let me know in the comments section. I will be doing a video on the GMC truck, uh, the van, the bus. I'll be doing walkthrough videos on all the vehicles. I just got to square a few things away on the other vehicles before I'm comfortable with talking about them. Uh, the truck will be staying the same color. I'm going to leave it silver and black. That's kind of the scheme of this truck. So silver and black. Um, it, it, it works and it's kind of uh, white vehicles and silver vehicles and black vehicles. If you have those three, they can be issues on the trail with not seeing the vehicle. I know that sounds strange. A huge truck, how do you not see it? Well, there are instances when you're coming over a crest and you're skyline. So a great truck being skylined, great clouds, great truck. Sometimes you don't see those vehicles. And honestly, when I hike away from the truck and I look back on a cloudy day or a snowy day, it's almost impossible to see the truck. So having lights on, I know some people comment on this on many overland channels. Why do you have the lights on when you're driving during the daytime? It's not to see what's in front of you. It's so people can see you. Because if you're flying down a dirt road and someone else is coming towards you and you meet in a turn, an ATV, a dirt bike, a snowmobile, a Jeep, a truck, those lights really show, hey, there's something there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another thing is the lighting is good for daytime, nighttime not just for seeing, uh, but also having other people be able to see you. So different vehicle colors. Um, <laughs> I love the silver, but like I said, sometimes it, uh, it's hard to see. It's hard to see on the trail, honestly. There are different situations where you'll go, you know, you'll scan the area and nothing, you look back, go, oh wait, there's a truck there. So this will be staying the same color. However, the other vehicles are gonna be going through color changes, more on that. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. I am getting very cold right now. And I've got other things that i got to be doing, so I just wanted to stop and do this real quick video for you. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below, and uh, hopefully this was helpful. Peace out, guys. I'll see you in the next video.